Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about the newest Natasha Denona palette to the bunch. This is the new retro palette that just launched. I believe last week I just received mine today a little bit later so I still wanted to go ahead and give my thoughts on this, try it out, and of course do some comparisons for you. So I only did one look for today um, actually filming. I did try out a couple looks but both looks I did looked super similar so I I decided to go ahead and just add the one in here but let's go ahead and get into this palette so this is the retro it is one of her midi palettes so a $65 palette and this is what it looks like so we have kind of this almost pinky purple color story kind of reminds me of like Anastasia Modern Renaissance, which we will definitely compare it to that in a later clip towards the end here, but that is kind of the vibe we're going for. This is the original mini retro. Now, I don't know really if these mini palettes are supposed to be modeled off the mini one because typically they don't usually line up. I was kind of hoping this would be more of a green and peach palette, but it totally was an unexpected color scheme for me. I would have loved to see more green but that is totally okay. I know you can still mix and match these two uh, together. Like you can totally pair those greens with some of these taupey shades in this palette for sure. And this one has just a little bit more peachy tones and this one's definitely more pinky mauves. So it's not really like the mini at all. You are getting 15 shades in this palette. There is a mixture of some shimmers, also some mattes, and some of those creamy mattes, which I know some of you guys don't like. This one actually has a lot of them in here, so I just want you guys to be aware of that. Very similar to how the mid-size Zendo palette is, with having quite a few of the creamy matte formula. So... I'm going to go ahead and swatch these for you. I have done so many comparisons today, so my hands are so stained. I'm hoping this comes out tonight, but I do want to do a one-by-one one swatch. So first up, we have the shade Glitz, and this one is more of a shimmer, but it's very light, so it's not like super metallic, but it is very pretty. Now, I'm not going to go quite in order because I want to compare it next to a Psychedelic in the palette, which is another shimmery pink that looks extremely similar. So this one is Psychedelic on the bottom, and those are the two pinky shimmers in the palette. They do look a little bit different on my hand. You can see they have a little bit of a shift, but I do feel like on the eyes, they are more of a subtle shimmer. They're not super metallic. In fact, I don't think there's any like super metallic shades in this palette. The next shade I'm going to swatch is is the shade Andy and this is kind of a matte cream to powder mauve. The cream to powders aren't so bad. I don't really mind them. You definitely don't need a lot of product when you build those up. You can use whatever brush you want. I use my regular crease brushes and I start small and kind of build up and just blend it out. It blends really nice and they do last on the eyelids. But if you have too much on your brush, it can become a little bit messy and you might get some fallout. So just keep that in mind. Next, we will swatch Jade. This one looks like it's going to be more of a metallic finish. It might be my favorite in the palette. It looks more purple. Next up, we have the shade Mod, which is just a matte cream. It has a slight pink undertone to it, so it makes a great highlight shade. And then we have the shade Vivian, which is another cream to powder. This one is very light. I believe it's like a matte, soft, dusty pink. Next row, we have the shade Groove, which is kind of a plummy burgundy. Next, we have the shade Apart, another cream to powder. And this is kind of the darkest brown in the eyeshadow palette. Next, we have the shade Go Go, which is yet another cream to powder. I told you there is a lot in here. That one has more of a peachy tone. Next we have a shimmer. This one is the shade Patty. And then we have a fun kind of purple, another metallic shimmer. This is in Swing. Next we have a matte. This one is called Nude Mauve. Very cool toned. Next we have the shade Rebellion. This is a cream to powder. Next we have a shimmer called Helio. This one's really pretty. And lastly we have 
Amara. And these are the full palette swatches. So that's the swatches of the palette, the kind of color story that we're getting here. It's definitely more of a soft palette, very muted. So let's go ahead and get into this look that I did today. So digging into the palette here, the first shade I took was the shade Nude Moth. This is probably my favorite shade for the crease. It's just a really nice kind of mid-tone taupe. Blends really beautifully, and it's just a regular matte formula. Next, I'm going to take the shade Andy in the crease. I'm going to use a part in the outer corner again. On the lower lash line, I am going to use this shade Rebellion. And then on a damp brush, I'm going into the shade Jade, and this is going to go on my lid. Quickly want to add a little bit of the glitter, since I am only doing one look today. I went ahead and put like my foundation on and stuff, but... I noticed for these like topper shades they really need a glitter glue because they just don't show up as much as I would like so I am going to add my NYX glitter glue on top here and then we're gonna go into psychedelic and place that over the glitter that almost turned it even more purple over top of that um, Jude shade it's really pretty I do wish that these were more metallic. They just don't seem as shiny as some of Natasha's other shades. Alright guys, I want to go ahead and do some comparisons with this palette because I do feel like this color story is very popular. Like you may already have some palettes in your collection that look similar. This is definitely new for Natasha though, although I would say it is... I think using three shades from the Lila palette I've heard, I decluttered my Lila palette. I just wasn't using it a ton. As far as how it compares to the Love palette, the Love palette is definitely a brighter, kind of more pinky purple toned palette. This one's more of like your soft glam. This one's definitely more of your colorful look. So if you want something more vibrant and fun, I'd probably go for the Love. I know this one was recently half off on Sephora. I think it did sell out though, but I'll have it down below if it's still there. And this one's definitely more of your softer looks. So the palettes that it reminded me the most of in my collection, uh, you'll have to disregard my swatches because I just like the swatching took literally so long. My swatches always go crooked. I'm just not the best swatcher, but I still wanted to give you guys my comparison thoughts. So I think it is pretty similar to the Huda Beauty Naughty Nudes palette color story wise. I definitely get similar vibes here as you guys can see them side by side. I did go ahead and do swatches as well side by side so you guys could see them together but this was definitely I would say the most similar. Both of them have kind of more of those fun metallics but I almost feel like the Huda palette is even shinier than Natasha's. Hers is definitely more matte, more muted, uh, but Huda also has some of those creamy mattes that Natasha also does. So I think this is probably the best dupe for it. I feel like it's not much of a price difference, but if you already have this in your collection, you may not need Natasha. If you already have Natasha, you probably don't need the Huda. Those are my definitely number one similar palettes. Another one that I wanted to compare it to is actually the Anastasia Modern Renaissance. I actually recently bought a new one of this because I wanted to have it back in my life, although I didn't know that this Natasha palette was coming out, so I probably would have skipped on buying this if I knew. But this one, the shimmers, I would say, aren't really similar at all in these, but the mattes definitely kind of match up together to be extremely similar. I did do some swatches. The mattes, I would say, are very close to each other. I did get a request, actually, to compare it to 
the Ofra Samantha March and I do think that this one is similar as well. The colors are definitely kind of in that same color story color family. As far as swatching goes I do like N Natasha's formula a lot better than Ofra's formula. Sometimes the Ofra shadows aren't as pigmented. They definitely take some building and the Ofra shimmers definitely aren't as crazy metallic. So that makes them pretty similar since the, this Natasha palette also isn't very metallic either but even the some of the shades on the bottom which are supposed to be highlights kind of matched up to go with this palette which you'll see in the swatches but these two actually turned out to be a kind of similar as well so there's a lot of palettes that you can kind of dupe with this color scheme but if you guys are a big Natasha fan like me it's kind of fun to have those kind of colors in the Natasha formula as well of course there is a lot of other palettes I looked at it next to like the Tarte Juicy my ABH Norvina, but they just did not seem as similar as the ones I featured today. So that is some comparisons I have. Now for kind of like my final thoughts on this palette here. Um, I was definitely really excited about this color story because I love like mauve tones like this, pinks, purples. It's some of my favorite colors to wear. But when I actually got the palette in my hands and seeing that a lot of the shades were that cream to powder formula, which isn't always my favorite to work with, I feel like those finishes look a lot lighter on the eyes. Like you can't really build them up as deep as a powder matte in my opinion. So I just feel like a lot of the looks in this palette look similar. Like even seeing other people's videos, I feel like everyone has very similar looks. I even did two looks myself trying to make them different and they were pretty much the same if you are following a similar technique. If you're doing a, like a different technique, like let's say you're going to do a cut crease versus like a halo eye, they're definitely going to look different, but there's not a ton of variety here. It's definitely a monochromatic color story. So do keep that in mind. I feel like for me, I'm really missing those crazy metallic Natasha Denona shadows in this palette. These are definitely way more muted, which I totally get because it is like more mod retro, definitely 70s vibes, which I feel like that definitely had a more of a matte look. So it definitely makes sense for what they're going for. But as far as the palette goes, I would have loved to see just a couple more of those metallics. Like these two pinks look so similar and they just kind of disappointed me how they're more of like a topper I had to use the glitter glue to kind of stick it down when I didn't use the glitter glue it just didn't pop as much it just looks so soft which is pretty for just like everyday natural looks but just like not what I expected from Natasha I definitely still think this is a gorgeous palette though I'm gonna use it for sure I like these tones a lot I just think they're so beautiful I think this kind of color scheme is gonna be really popular for the fall season I know Fenty is coming out with something similar and of course we have some of the previous palettes I showed that were like very identical as well so I did just kind of want to get my thoughts out here on this palette even though there is a ton of videos already do this look and just kind of share what I think about the new Natasha Denona retro palette I'm so curious to see if she is going to do another holiday palette or if this is it this is probably it because I feel like her glam palette last year came out around the same time I feel like I definitely have more of a love for her glam palette though just because of those gorgeous metallic silvers that are in there. So stunning. But still a beautiful color story. Good quality palette as well. You just definitely have to like those cream to powder mattes that she includes in a lot of her palettes these days. So that is going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.